Hi everyone, welcome to session seven of our education series. And today's topic will be hepatitis B pharmacology. That will be presented by me and um, Richard Lim, who is our external speaker today. So here's a QR code on monday.com if anyone wants to make any um, education request or nominating speaker. So before I start, I would like to begin acknowledging the traditional owner of the land we meet today. We pay our respect to elder past and present and to emerging leader. We extend this acknowledgement to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander who may also also be present today. We are meeting on the land of the Woiwurrung Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. In acknowledging the Kulin Nation, we express our gratitude for their continued and ongoing care and curation of this land and water. We will well observe and honor the Kulin Nation intrinsic and deep connection to land, sky and water and the creator Banjo. Liverwa is committed to being led by and informed from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander on how to bridge health outcome for local community and improve liver health. So, <laughs> it's my pleasure to introduce today external speaker, Mr. Richard Lim. So, on behalf of Liverwa, we would like to thank you and appreciate Richard for taking time out of his busy schedule to join us today. So most of us have heard about Richard Lim, as he was one of our head heroes. But um, a little bit more information about him. He has worked as a clinical pharmacist at Queen Victoria Hospital, which is now known as Monash Hospital. He also been nominated uh, as an Australian of the Year twice in 2012 and 2016. And in addition to his um, impressive career as a pharmacist, Richard owner, Pharmacy called Lim Pharmacy, which have received a number of awards, including um, Australian Achievement Award for three consecutive years. And besides that, he also worked as a counselor at Springwell Central World at the city of Greta Denana. And the latest milestone that we want to share is that Richard just have achieved um, a month ago in hosting an annual gala dinner with Monash Hell, raising more than $1.4 million to support newborn intensive care unit at Monash. Um, Children Hospital. So, welcome, Richard, to our thank session you, today. Thank you, Adrian, <laughs> for your kind words, and also Debbie as well. I'm very pleased to be part of your health seminar regarding to liver wells, part of Hepatitis Victoria. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So here's the content of our, of our session today is just a bit of housekeeping and then why you need to take um, happy medication, basis of chronic HPV, pharmacology of um, hepatitis B medication and what does happy medicine do. And lastly, we will be talking about the goal of treatment. So just some information, everyone know that happy is known as the virus that causes damage to your liver. It can be acute or chronic. So in Australia, more than 2,200,000 people living with chronic HIV, and many of them don't really know that they have it. So you can protect yourself again HIV by having the vaccine, and you can take medication to take care of your chronic HIV. Remember that you can live well even though you have chronic HIV. So medication for happy can help you to live well with the virus, but unfortunately, there's no cure for happy yet. But medication will help you less likely to get liver cancer. And but for people who have chronic happy and they don't have any sign of liver damage, they might not need to take medication. So it is important for you to um, get your liver checkup every six to twelve months. If you have any sign of liver damage, you should consult with your doctor about taking the medication for happy. There are a few options for medication for um, H for chronic happy, and you can get them with quite low price from the pharmaceutical benefit right. scheme. Yeah. Yeah. You can give you the yeah. oh, you can say he can give you the price. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know about the cost <laughs> and the PBS, very cheap nowadays, due to be very, very expensive or low antiviral drug. I give you a bit of idea in case there are some of your client or your customer or your uh, people that ask you some question. 
The price is you have concession card or pension card holder. You pay normally the government allow you to charge only seven dollar fifty thirty, and the government subsidize back to the pharmacist. But the, the pharmacist allowed to discount one dollar. Therefore, it pay only six dollar thirty to some pharmacy. Some pharmacy charge you seven dollar thirty. But for a general patient that no concession card hold, uh, concession card, but they have Medicare. Normally in the past, last year, they pay $42.50, but now the government dropped the threshold to only $30 per prescription for two months supply. It means that, and the pharmacy discount $1 as well, you pay only $29, very, very cheap. That's very fortunate in the one that live in this country, the best country in the world for healthcare system. Thanks for that. Yeah, so the, the cost of medication is quite affordable at the moment if you yep. have a Medicare card and concession card. So um, just a bit of um, diagram. So if you live with chronic happy, you should do your blood test or, and fibroscape or ultrasound every 6 to 12 months. And like I said, if the result has no sign of liver damage, you do not need to take the medication. But if you have a sign of liver damage, you have to consult with your doctor. And then the doctor will um, like um, let you know which phase of your liver condition now. And then the doctor will make a decision what sort of treatment that um, you need. So like, um, like I mentioned, not everyone needs to take um, happy medication, but this can be changed over time, some people they might not need to take medication at the start, but as the, like later on, they uh they might have like increased viral load, so they might need to take the medication. So that's why it is important for you to keep your liver check up, and then the doctor will like decide or let you know if you need to start taking your medication. And this depends on um many things that include the basis of the hepatitis B virus that you have, the liver function test that shows certain enzyme and the liver that shows scarring or swelling. So I'll give this opportunity to Richard to further explain about the basis of HPV and the treatment of that. Yep, thank you, Debbie. Before the doctor that spent time to try to find uh, the phase of chronic hepatitis B, I'm going to explain in simple language and a bit more detail. The face here quite a good summary. You see the first one we call immune tolerance. I come across a lot of people have immune tolerance, even have C immune tolerance. That's according to my experience of oh, nearly 40 years now in Monash Medical Center in Victoria until I left 1991. Some people very worry. I tell you a bit of a story about some people because in that time we didn't have any much treatment. And the specialist, they didn't know how to communicate. I want to talk about communication between the GP or the specialist with the consumer as well, and their patient as well, and yourself as a uh, uh, healthcare worker, how you communicate with them. This is a real story that I come across a lot in 1988, I think. You know what? One of the young girls, I didn't know that she Cambodian, she came along in the hospital and they check up with other reasons and through the blood test, they found out that she had uh, antibody positive to hepatitis B. And the specialist said, ah, that's it, we have no treatment. You know? oh, well, we don't know what to help you. And they tried to, he tried to tell her about the consequence of hepatitis B positive. That, that time, it was very new, 1988, and she's so worried, she's so depressed. And I went to check the drug chart from room to room. And so, what are you doing? What are you so worried about? You're still a young lady. And she told me the story after that I discovered that she was Cambodian. So I explained to her, don't worry about it. You keep your immune system strong. You keep yourself healthy. Eat your food as your medicine. One day, you don't have to eat your medicine as your food. Please listen to me. She understand that I keep encouraging her for the last couple of days in the hospital after she's so happy and she should come to me up to now. She has no problem. Therefore, we back to TP talk about these phases. I mean that people sometimes immuno immune tolerant as well. Even you positive, but you never develop hepatitis. Why say sometimes, even though you uh, antibody positive not mean that going to develop hepatitis B. Sometimes you die before hepatitis B cause any trouble to your body, to your liver. 
and she understand that. Therefore, all human beings, we all of have different type of something immune tolerance. Like in there, you, you, I want to understand that high HBV DNA. But if you very high HBV DNA, not mean that you need to take the tablet yet because you normal liver function test, even though you uh, uh, hepatitis B antigen positive, but you need to monitor every six to 12 months only. That one, that's, that, that sounds like that the case of the lady you talked about, the younger. And I can give you more a lot about that because ALT, I keep telling customers, every time you see your doctor, you especially get a copy of your liver function test or any other thing, any blood test, I can interpret for you very easily. There are a lot of GP in my area uh, or any other. Sometimes Monash Medical Center sent to me because we have enough pharmacists to explain and we have four or five each day pharmacists. Therefore, we explain to them more thoroughly that than the GP doctor just write, write and go, go, go without getting a copy. I say, bring the copy. I spend time with you for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, no problem, no cost. We explain to you to understand yourself. When you understand yourself, you are become your own doctor. Probably, to part what my thinking, they have a positive perspective all the time. That's how they survive longer, they be happy, they understand their immune system, very important. Uh, to fight against the hepatitis B virus. That's the, the most important. Therefore, you, this sort of a case, the first phase, you need to monitor every six to 12 months only because it's no need to take medication yet. And uh, as a doctor point of view, I give you a doctor of point of view, I mean, you understand, normally you don't tell myself to the patient, too, but they might not understand too. They look at, you know, the, 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 the virus, you know, as a whole, and they say, they look at that. So many, so many indicators. They look at probably you, uh, Pippi already mentioned about fibro scan and those sort of things. They do all those sort of things, ALT, they count, they look at the uh, number of virus that if, I think by definition about three, some countries slightly different, but in general rule about 20,000 international units per meal. You know, that's what they're looking for that. If it's too high, that's what they start to look into it. Therefore, I give you this favorite short one, but I'll explain in detail. The second phase, immune clearance. Clearance is clearly that people give you a very clear uh, summary. High, you know, high, high DNA. DNA, that means high HBV DNA. That I talk about over 20,000 international units per meal and abnormal liver function test as well. Hepatitis B antigen positive as well. That one at, at risk of progression of cirrhosis. Therefore, we should be referred to the treatment. That's from, that's the doctor as well. But for today, from my understanding, maybe TP and all uh, your staff want to understand a little bit about you know, clinical side of the hepatitis B treatment and also the medication, how it works, clinically, whatever. I'll give you that much short and I'll take and maybe tell it on about it and the treatment. The third phase, uh, yeah, the third phase is called immune control. Immune control, we talk about low, when they have low DNA, you know, probably less than 20,000 international units, normal function test, liver function test, and uh, uh, hepatitis B antigen is negative as well, but anti, uh, what we call this one, like zero, uh, what we call the surface antigen, I think anti HBE positive, is that right? The, the one, what, what my, Remember, APHB look like the surface antigen more positive. We need to monitor only, we don't need the treatment either. Every six to 12 months, we monitor that people. You know, that people, you see, there's a lot of criteria there, but not the specialist role more, but we should understand to at we can explain to the customer if your client or your community come to ask you or you give a lecture, at least you can give some idea about what you think and they bring some sort of uh, blood test to you. Immune, immune escape, there's another even high, very high of DNA again, DNA, HBV, uh, uh, virus is very high. Abnormal liver function test as well. And um, uh, what we call the H, uh, hepatitis antigen is negative instead. But anti, I think, and this is surface antigen model, I remember, is uh, positive. That one look likely is that risk of progression to cirrhosis or to cancer, you know, hepat hepatocellular carcinoma. Therefore, should be referred for consideration treatment as well. These are four phases. 
And I give you explain uh, briefly, quickly about the doctor, what they're looking at. The positive for sure they're looking at it, but they look at whatever the TP gave a very quick summary, they're very good already, but they have to look at um, other mean as well. You know, other mean, it mean that they look at from the, the fibrosis, the age of the patient. And this is from uh, doctor point of view, and as a pharmacist point of view, when you work in the hospital, you look at so many uh, things as well. You look at family history, osteoporosis as well. Do they have history of cancer? Do they have history of fibrosis or how old they are? That sort of thing very important as well in part of the, the treatment. And also the most important, I said, the DNA of the virus had to be less than 20,000 international units per minute. That was most important. Therefore, the doctor that they determine the, 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 the phase is more than us. But what we try to understand, they want to understand, they don't ask questions, they can use some idea. Liver function is always very important. Anyone that come to my pharmacy that have been to Australia not long, they don't understand. And the GP is a doctor, the doc, GP is a human being. They make mistakes from time to time. I come across a lot, lot I pull one of the gentlemen, only 30 years or something, and he died because of hepatitis B. He, he died not long ago. He called SK Media Frame. He came here, he didn't end up the month one or the month two. Therefore, by as a health professional like myself and like TP, like yourself, huh? Adrian, you are the manager of your uh, legal wealth and tell all your startup, make sure keep in mind them, please, especially the newcomer, like refugee, like a migrant, please check your liver function. That when you come, you're looking for the baseline. You do all your blood tests. Everything you want to know is do everything. This is what I keep telling them, do everything, you know, to find out if your liver function test, kidney function, uh, Time to take you any, uh, your blood pressure, your cholesterol, your blood uh, glucose as well. All of this is very important. At least you have some idea where you stand for. And by doing that, very helpful, but for the bad guy, by the time he discovered that, it's too late. And he died not long ago, probably about three, four months ago. And uh, some people as well, like the man, luckily he came to see me. And I say, how long have you been in Australia? He said, oh, about six, or a few years, actually, one or two years. I said, better to check yet. The doctor said, my doctor haven't checked anything much yet. When do the blood test is positive or anything? And a uh, gastroenterologist or a consultant a specialist, he prescribed him straight away. Why we have that straight away? He's on, on a regular basis now, follow up by myself as a pharmacist, plus the doctor also. That's the most important to me that I ask our job mainly for, inform them, remind them, give them some uh, idea about the services in this country so much in the best in the world. If you don't use it, you lose it. But please use it, use it, use it. Therefore, the job of KP and other, you are the most important because you're going to interact with the community all the time. Well, I'm glad that TP invited me now a bit longer. Therefore, I can juggling about my schedule. Therefore, this Saturday, I don't mind to spend time with KP to explain the Sri Lankan community, to let them understand more and reinforce you know, the treatment, whatever, if they're on a certain thing. Some people from different countries, later on, probably you can tell them. For them, they come from different countries, what called religious point of view, sometimes different, you know, vaccination, very hard to convince them. I'm the one who do vaccination every day. Some really skeptical about vaccine, all sort of rubbish that they listen to social media from their friend, their uh, uh, relative from overseas. I, I don't want to say what nationality I come from, because then you know, you know already multinational, uh, about 158 languages spoken, about 63 percent, you know? Mm, yeah, okay. And what quickly I go to, to quickly, because we don't have much time, I give yeah. more. Then, I'm yeah. going to go straight up. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I do now, but I give you a bit about labor function test, histology. But always, I encourage people because they really scare about uh, what we call the biopsy liver, liver biopsy. They really scare her about biopsy. Even tonight, I talk about liver biopsy. Don't worry about the research, show, but where it's minimal, we can help you. No? Now, what if you want me to talk about the treatment, I can give you the treatment now. Treatment, I tell you the the, so many medication in the past, but now all those is a bit obsolete. We don't use much, you know. That they be put on there already, but you can repeat that. What I can't remember now. What you put on there. Um, there's two type of um, 
chronic happy medication. The first one is um, injection, and then the second one is oral. So mm -hmm. interferon is an um, injection one, and then nucleoside yep. analog is known as the oral that everyone, I think everyone might be have heard about entecovy or tenofovy. Yeah, yeah, nucleoside and nucleotide analogs. <laughs> Let, uh, lamivudine is going to be rare now because six, ten years ago we used a lot of lamivudine and still some people, maybe only one customer on it, I think, but no, no, maybe stop already for me. Hepsera, a day for we, a day for we, we use it in the past, but now it's like slow down a lot in my pharmacy. The two main ones, like for example, uh, lamivudine, I don't think we use in Australia much to me, but the most two uh, common one we use, tenom. Tenovia, uh, tenofovia, we use a lot, and the other one not in here, but uh, I can't count that one. The one we wrote Baraclut, or the name is, yeah, Antikavia. Yeah, Antikavia, we still use a lot. Antikavia, Baraclut is discontinued in this country, the, the brand name only. At least let you know that we sometimes say, why can't get Baraclut? Because we still in see because they get used to Baraclut. They want that brand all the time. I say, what can you do? You have to fly overseas then. If you have a money to uh, buy a ticket to go there. Otherwise, the only two mainly most common one that you should know is Antikavir. It means that they use the brand generic all the time. A lot of companies come with, with that product. It will generate like that from Apple to so many from Milan, my name, whatever. All those companies did the name Antikavir. And also the other one, Wiry, that is still exists one, Wiry. And why did it mean the uh, why did uh, yeah tenofovir yeah tenofovir that's the only two existing one but interferon from the beginning we use a lot in my pharmacy we use a lot very expensive the government subsidized and a lot of people from overseas come to buy from Australia instead but now for less likely we do maybe probably what my understanding maybe union hospital want to take some other reason that uh they, they put a lot in there too but i can give you more if you want to understand that but if it's not important you don't worry about you want i can give you about you interferon with combination with other antiviral drug the for the treatment is um it's so many things maybe i better not to talk too much about or if you just go to straight on to treatment then no? what the medicine the three common one i already mentioned and uh, the, the the dosage if you want to understand that for example and take away it, and take away the dosage become two types, 0.5 milligram and one milligram. Not you don't want to know, you let me know, I don't have to talk about that. And we treat on, and take one every day, and the government give you two months supply like I, I, I told you just now. Yeah, that's the one with the treatment. I just I give you the pharmacology of it. It's in a very simple and short one, otherwise very long one to explain. Interferon too, it's just like, we call normally whole take a C, take a C, that's still that name. It will normally be treat. We don't use much uh, in a retail pharmacy anymore, mainly in a hospital now to you. And you treat Hep C and cancer and especially non Hodgkin lymphoma and auto autoimmune disease as well, like multiple sclerosis or liver injury. But when you use that, it's not a cause, it's the side effect of, uh, of the interference. Sometimes it could liver injury, it lead to jaundice, but we know. Normal hospital will be followed up very closely. Zephyr, don't worry about me, would it anymore? I said, maybe don't have to tell you anymore. I talk about entacovir and also tenofovir only, and I explain one by one. Now, entacovir, when we take it, we take either 0.5 or 1 milligram, depend on the specialist that describe it. And if you want to know about pharmacology of it, under the name of guy, uh, ganosine, uh, ganosine analog. Now, the pharmacy, we had to know that, but for you, but we don't need to know that. But, but you do know that it in, inhibits the hepatitis B polymerase only. Inhibit that for the DNA, cut the, the virus can replicate only that the idea, prevent virus DNA from synthesis. When it prevents synthesis, it means that the virus is going to die. Yeah, that's probably the main reason. Indication many chronic hepatitis B or that have active liver inflammation. But I thought, in a pharmacy, we always look at them, we always ask them always our routine, you know, our generic question is always, are you pregnant? If you're pregnant, you know, we ask them to be, if you're pregnant, but to go back to your uh, consultant, especially to ask you, because of, for us so far, we don't have any, enough clinical data to say that you are safe for that drug just now. 
the one I mentioned about this drug, adepomia. Adepomia, we don't have much evidence about pregnancy yet, but might be, I can further research because this week I missed, I didn't have much time to do research about with, with both science daily that I'm, I'm going to talk tonight. After this, I'm not going to research about science daily. They tell me any new thing you know, from vitamin D to treatment of stroke by using stem cell. The one I'm going to find out, but because that one is a current one that haven't uh, used on the market yet, uh, the clinical trial not conclusive yet, but we see some the, the light of the end of the tunnel. That one probably going to tell you later on. For breastfeeding, one more breastfeeding is not much clinical data for barricade either. But at first, the fact that you can, you should know a bit. Sometimes they ask you, but very, very little, very about 1% or more. 1% or more, very same or those antiviral that you talk about. Why people can worry about, some people worry about the side effect. Only I say, look, you eat food, you see side effect. You eat too much, you're going to vomit anyway, you have digestion anyway. Therefore, anything has side effect, usually. Therefore, you have to look at the benefit and the risk as a health professional or you are as an educator to community. You have to state that. You have to look balance. You know, if the benefit is so high, the risk is so little, only 1%. What are you worry about? Are you going to die because of hepatitis B or you want to survive live longer? That's more end. In the future, no, who knows? A lot of things you can do. The, the most common side effect is headache only, fatigue, nausea, but sometimes transient, sometimes long term a bit. But headache, I come across things are very short term. Nausea, diarrhea, dyspepsia, very short term. This is my experience only, even though clean, uh, the information, drug information said that. Very rare one. It's less than one percent is rash, alopecia. Some people maybe lose bit of hair. That's normal. Don't worry about. And the why why the second one that most common uh, common you, we use a lot. Why well, I say I can refer to Tepi Te Te if you want to know about my patient confidential. I can have release information for her because she healthcare professional provider as well. The nofovir it means that we have two types of the nofovir. What the nofovir is proxol, this disoproxol, that one another. So there's two base sort. The one I'm going to tell you why I try to tell you to understand two of them. But mainly in Australia we have only the nofovir disoproxol only, metabolized to active ingredient because the nofovir diphosphate. That one is the tech ingredient that work by inhibit the viral polymerase and terminate the DNA, DNA, chain, DNA chain of the virus. Therefore, it kills the virus as well. Therefore, indication for hepatitis B as well. But the one, one thing that we concerned a bit about the renal, only renal clearance. When your renal clearance less than 50 mil per minute, why I said if that or if you have a chance, our, I don't know you do it or not, that's your, but for us, our profession, for me, I'd love to look at the, the, the blood test. Therefore, I can indicate that even better. No? They, they love to do that. They always bring the blood test. I love to read for them because I'm from hospital background, from clinical pharmacy. I read for them, I explain to them. When the clearance less than 50 mil per minute, we try to maybe looking for alternative treatment. Now, pregnancy seems to be better actually for the xenophobia, you know, no increased risk of birth defect. Actually, drug information center. Well, not, you're not sure you're doing drug information center for all of you. Maybe you talk something that's not clear. You can talk to us or you can read that information in Monash Medical Center or online Melbourne Hospital. They give you anything you want to know. I do the work that information center as well there. You ask you anything. Anything. Don't believe in the Bible, the book too much. The book, you see, for us it's different from the book and the Google, Dr. Google is the dangerous one, Dr. Google. When you listen to Dr. Google, it's not always wrong, it's right a lot, majority right, maybe 78% correct, but sometimes. You got the wrong information, probably affect you know, the patients a lot. Therefore, tell them don't believe to Dr. Google so much. You talk to your GP, you talk to liver well uh, people, educator, you talk to the pharmacist. That's the most important because look at real clinical data. We don't look at all these uh, the, all this information that sometimes not correct at all. Therefore, the next one is uh, for the the, for the, the drug the, that we call virus, you know, for weird, look likely, I'll give you a bit idea more because we talk about uh, um, what we call uh, it's a radical transmission. I can they reduce it actually that tablet reduces the mother to children to, ch to children transmission as well of hepatitis 
uh, hepatitis virus. Therefore, it helps that part one as well, helping the transmission from mother to the to the child when giving during uh, when they giving the club that during the third trimester, see the baby the baby that that ha uh, happy, uh, the hepatitis B virus and hepatitis immunoglobin at birth. Oh no no, the, no I think the other way. What uh, it means that the chance of transmission is less likely, and also I don't give birth around uh, third trimester. We tend to give them uh, the what we call the the immunoglobulin at birth too, to prevent from the mother to the to the to the, to the child as well. And breastfeeding seems to be safe too. No, why uh, why 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 we seem to be breastfeeding is safe and <clears throat> for for the mother have age. Even, however, if the mother has IV infection, breastfeeding is discouraged. That one is different story. You don't need to know anything. I maybe skip that one. At first, effect is similar to the other one, too. One percent only nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, a bit extra flatulent, weakness, headache, similar. But don't worry so much about that one. But only one thing to concern about um, uh, why it is hypophosphemia, the high hypo lowering of the phosphate in the body. That's all. No? Therefore, but nephro toxicity we have to monitor very closely as well. And rare one, the side effect is rash or probably, uh, oh, well, you can detect even you on tablet like fluoxetine. They have a hepatitis anyway. Sometimes to some not very rare. You call Jordan, you can detect very quickly. But the most important another one, pancreatitis. They have to keep the pancreas pancreatitis but less than one percent anyway. Don't worry so much about renal failure, whatever. It's very small percentage too. I try to cut down very shortly. And for the bone, affect the bone density, those sort of things, or little to special, don't have too much, otherwise the person, the customer don't want to take. <laughs> that what is not thing for you to understand your, your knowledge only about bone density, affect bone density, and those sort of things. Don't worry so much about that. Maybe finish for that, yeah. the treatment, OK? Yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah. So I'm just a bit um, summarize of yep. the um, treatment. Yep. So like I said, there's um, two type of drug for HPV infection. So I'll go for start with the first one, Hepsera. That's for um, um chronic HPV or history. If you have like history of active HPV, and that's used for orally. It could have some side effect like liver failure or abnormal liver function or some um kidney issue. And like Richard said, it's a bit of very minimal um, percentage with rush, and it could increase serum creatinine and degree serum um, phosphorus. And you have to be very cautious uh, when using this um, Hepsera because it could increase risk of never help the <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, it could be contraindicated with um, tenophobia as well. Um, before you use, uh, if you use this medication, you have to do the HIV test and monitor liver and renal function test. And we usually give education to the patient that not like suddenly stop this medication. You have to ask the doctor for um, advice. And the other one is um, Antecovir. That is um, also chronic hepatitis B medication with um, evidence of active liver inflammation that also type of oral. Um, this medication, it could have some side effect like um, elevated liver enzyme, increased cholesterol or triglyceride, um, very low, side effect of headache, dizziness and fatigue, and depression, insomnia, or anxiety. Um, this medication has to be where um, interaction with increased risk of hypotension, which is very low blood pressure, uh, increased risk of serum level of associated risk of myopathy. Oh, does that relate to heart? I'm not quite sure. Which one? <laughs> myopathy. Myopathy, you know, they, uh... Affect probably the depend on which, which part of the body. Okay. Like cardiomyopathy, it means affect oh, the blood yeah, muscle. Okay. My myopathy means that they generate a certain tissue yeah. or certain cell in somewhere in the body. You know. Yeah. They say myopathy or is it that one? Just just myopathy. Which which brand? Yeah. Um, antiquity. Antiquity. Yeah, but okay. anyway, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. you have to be like the same one. You have to do the um HIV test, and there's some like cardiac cardiac risk factor that have to be accessed and treat to any like um avoid any um myocardial infection, and of course that liver functions you have to do it, and this medication likely to be recommend take it um with an empty stomach. 
Um, the other one is tenophobia isoproxil. Sorry, I only do one, so I only do um tenophobia isoproxil. So that one can be treated for happy, chronic happy, and HIV as well. And then the type of drug is oral. Um, some side effect is decrease in bone density. So if you on this medication, you are more likely to have a low vitamin D. So we recommend you to take um vitamin D. Vitamin D tablets. Well, yeah, vitamin D and calcium supplement. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. now we have K2 as well. You yeah. can take vitamin D, K2, and calcium together, not yeah. come together, or you can buy separate calcium by itself. K2 plus vitamin D work a lot better. K2 help them absorb a lot of calcium yeah. into the bone. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, Adrian. Sorry to ask a quick question. Just yep. really curious about the bone density scan. So it's part of commencement of tenofovir requiring that the consumer um, has a bone density scan before starting that medication. Did, did you say that the consumer has to do the bone density scan? I was curious. I was I was wondering um, if if it's a, if it's a requirement before they start to have a bone density scan as baseline. Um, from my knowledge, we, we don't require bone density, but if you do the blood test and then the doctor have found that you have very low dose of vitamin D, that's another more like um test that might be required. And then that if that it's too like very to the level that it's unacceptable level, they might be required you to do the bone density scan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think it's not that um for people at the age they don't really um require um bone density scan. And then some adverse effect, nephrotoxicity and peripheral neuropathy and hyperphosphatemia. Um, and caution HIV test, and it's not really recommend for um the child under 12 years. So if the, the child under 12 years have um growing happy, then might be required an um, alternative um, treatment. And education is that we advise the patient to take the medication with food. Um, um uh, and then if you stop this medication, uh, there might be a chain of reactivation of hepatitis B occur. And interferon, um, that's what is um, for subcutaneous or IV. It's for chronic happy and chronic hep C as well. And there's some side effect with thyroid dysfunction and some like cold flu symptom and could elevate liver enzyme and um, affect your um, visual as well. So interaction is could be risk of neurotropenia if given with another medication, Zido would move down. <laughs> Sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Yeah, and just caution with your baseline blood and satellite count, um, liver function test, serum LT, albumin. Well, that's all in liver function test. You have to check it regularly. And then um, education is like instruct patient to correct use um sub cut because if you on this medication there might be a chain that you have to do it by yourself so the doctor will give you um like you know like education regarding how to take care of the injection site and how to do like a correct technique for giving the injection yeah so <laughs> What does hepatitis, so overall hepatitis B is work to prevent and hold or even reverse the progression of liver injury towards cirrhosis and liver de decomposition or liver cancer. So in short and simple is control viral replication. So the goal of treatment is that, yeah, yeah, just be mindful of time, so I'm just gonna go no, through no. all of this. So um, the goal of treatment, then we have a two, um, two goals. The first primary goal is um, normalize ALT um, level that's in your liver function test, um, achieve HbAg loss in HbEAg positive patient, achieve substance suppression of HbV viral implication, achieve HbSAg loss with or without anti HbS0 coercion and uh, reduce risk of progression to cirrhosis and hep hepatosecular carcinoma. That's um, yeah. one type of liver cancer. And then the other secondary goal is just prevent for the same is heavy re reactivation, vertical transmission, prevention or treatment of extra hepatitis manifestation, regression of fibrosis or cirrhosis, and reduction of SSD. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like it's oh, just I, like I, I say earlier. <laughs> so, and then 
it is prevention of fist liver failure in acute HPV. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have anything to add? Or that's it. Uh, that's about all, I think. The main thing yeah. is the customer or the patient understand what treatment all about. That's the most important as our healthcare provider. Make sure they understand about the medication, the side effect, understand of, you know, of, of the, the treatment as a whole is very important for them. That's a problem for multi cardiac community. They don't understand that, you know, that's a, the most uh, difficult one to educate them or to, to let them to understand how important it is about the yeah. patient and complying the most important. Yeah, Adrian has a question. Yeah, yeah. question. Oh, yeah, okay. I've got mountains of questions. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. um, oh, one of the things that thank you so much for both of you for sharing all that amazing information. Um, the first question that's on my mind is, I guess, reflecting on the importance of the role of the pharmacist in yep. somebody's care um, and, uh, the, you know, the importance of a pharmacist in having an ongoing relationship with that consumer and providing this tailored education and support um, and engaging that person. So I think from um, looking at our team members um, that provide support to consumers that might be calling up, uh, calling up on our telephone or we might be engaging through our activities, it's really being mindful that it's not just the doctor that's involved in somebody's care. You know, the, that person's care extends to the role of the pharmacist and nurses and um, GPs and specialists, and it's an important network of services. Um, Councillor, I was curious to learn about, you know, where you've seen really effective networks of people that work around community members, um, where you've been able to see some really good outcomes because you've had a, a great team of people around a person. To me, yeah, for my pharmacy, I can uh, like say on behalf of other pharmacy, for us, we very communicate very well with the GP from 1991 onward up to now because myself, I believe in communication. Therefore, we work very closely, like you said already, pharmacists with consumer, with the healthcare provider, like even they be it's part of our team as well. If she want to connect with us, she want to understand the history of some of our customers, we can provide that as long as they give us the consent. I can give her all of those things, the phone and the, and the nurses. We work very closely with the nurses because at the moment we have a lot of uh, elderly people that live in the nursing home or aged care or live in their home, but provide by the council, services by the council and by the aged care provider and those sort of things. We work very closely. We will monitor very closely from the medical pack, because medical pack means that the docent, make sure everything correct on a daily basis or weekly basis. We communicate very well to make sure everything 100% correct. Therefore, to me, this is a network that you say just how we say so that if we can uh, connect to each other, but a lot of some farms, it might be not, I can't say it for themselves, uh, for them. But for us, we connect very well. We connect with the hospital very well. The hospital tend to send, sometimes they send their patient that's not our customer at all to us because they think that we have enough pharmacists to take care of, to do the review we call home medication review. We can review on a daily basis. Like you, for example, or myself, or anyone that on certain medication, like two or three medication or whatever, if they want for us to review for free of charge, we come sit down and review the medication. And or they have any other medical condition like we can help them as well. But for our pharmacy, I give you a bit of an idea about how we interact with each other. The nurses rank, we get a phone call and sometimes they send, hospital send, we sit down and explain to them. And when they discharge from hospital, we the one get all the, the discharge um, report okay. summary. We're going to sit down and explain to them your medication being changed. We should have to stick with the medication now. Therefore, Compliant, very important as a health profession, as a team, we work as a team. And uh, for me, I believe in communication always. That's why I keep trying my pharmacist, make sure you communicate with the GP very closely on a professional level. You always ask their advice, not how you communicate. If you don't communicate well, they don't like us at all. They think that the pharmacist is just take, trying to take over from their job. But if you can, <laughs> yeah, they always think that, that why pharmacists know, you understand now, the government want the pharmacist to prescribe because pharmacist prescribe, uh, a pharmacist practitioner can prescribe. When the nurses 
can prescribe. You know why? Because the nurse has to communicate well with the doctor or can please the doctor in a simple way. Therefore, I, I'm a big part of a lot with uh, a pharmacy school. I'm a pharmacy project many years ago, spent a few years with the pharmacy school, with the dean of pharmacy school now as well, from time to time when they have any, any function, like pharmacists all the year. They invited me, I sit with the dean, I visit the Pharmaceutical Society of Australia, uh, Victoria Brown, the director, and we discuss why we are shorting the farms and why this, why that. I'm the one giving them advice from my point of view. Back to that, why we won farms here the year in 2013, because we communicate well, we did very well, and everything's good. We got farms here of the year overall winner and community engagement of the year as well. The reason because we engage the committee on that. We provide health seminar for free, we provide uh, social media seminar on the weekly basis. I want to take you again. Do you remember uh, what is that, Sambat? Yeah, yeah. yeah Sambat. He with us all the time. And we, who, Melanie. Is that Melanie with us? One Thursday. I can't remember. She former, yeah, former CEO or maybe yeah. she, I can remember. Yeah, she on uh, live, be live with us as well. That sort of thing, for me, very important. If you have health, you have everything. If you don't have health, you don't have anything at all. Therefore, that's that sort of thing. That's why we are connect with each other. The most important, communicate with each other. The most important, the benefit of the consumer, but the benefit of the healthcare system as well. The government going to pay a lot of money. If you don't care, that's a problem. And a hospital, hospital costs a lot of money. But now we have your organization that provides all of these um, uh, seminar or educate all the community. Excellent. I support 100%. Honestly, anything you need. Yeah. My help, I support 100%. Because the liver issue is a big issue. Yeah. Let our TP want to talk with me about fatty liver, about non, <laughs> I don't want to say, alcoholic due to, you know, cirrhosis, whatever. So many things to tell. But liver is the most important organ in the body. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so Richard, in his pharmacy, he's more focused on um, really focus on communication. So all of his staff, they all can speak at least four language and most of his staff can speak like seven languages. That's why most of the people, like most a lot of like customer in South is they likely to go to his pharmacy because they can speak multiple language. Did that answer your question? I might be missed because I didn't listen to the last part. A very strong yes. Thank you so much for that answer. I do have another quick question just to ask. Yeah. Um, Mindful of uh, many communities that live in Australia as well, and each of those communities come with their own health practices and forms of medicine and traditional therapies as well. So engaging somebody, some of these medications can interact significantly with some traditional therapies as well. Do you often use the Liverpool Hep B drug interactor checker as part of your work, or would you direct consumers to that? If if you were you know talking to somebody that say was on St John's Wort, which interacts with everything, um, you know uh, that to to kind of be able to do that double checking if if a traditional therapy might have an interaction with one of these HEP B medications. Yeah, hundred percent. That's a good question, Adrian. That's a very good question. For me, you know, seeing a first year pharmacy, I really concentrate on the drug interaction between the herbal medicine, traditional medicine, supplements with the modern medicine or affect the liver and the kidney, that the two organs affect the most because the drug eliminate or break down by the liver or by the kidney, excrete by the kidney. This sort of thing, a long story, I try to make it short here, but because I give some health signal from time to time about supplement. People nowadays, as long as they hear the word natural, doesn't matter what we take it. But I said word natural is misleading the public. You know why? Like you are blind and death on this. Someone put the gun near your head, about to blow your brain. You don't even know what's going on. When you take this supplement, traditional medicine, you have to talk about the herbal medicine, whatever, you don't know where it ends up to. We, we let the pharmacy, we know exactly where the medication ends up to, how much we break down, like we talked just now. Nephrot, nephrotoxicity, you know, uh, hepatotoxicity, all those things. We know exactly what we're doing. And we took clinical trials sometimes 10 years before we decided to let human beings consume those tablets. Therefore, I said, please, blind and deaf only, don't listen. And you know what? So many uh, migrants and refugees, they listen to each other rather than medical profession. I hear every day, I'm really, really disappointed sometimes. 
Why are you enjoying with each other? Why don't you talk to your doctor? Talk to me, talk to, if you're not in that information center. Always, every day, I not sleep to you, I'm not turned like I not sleep. They always come and say, you are wrong. You're going to kill yourself. I tell you a, a funny story a little bit. Uh, you know? This is a real story. One old lady, she had a, a well leakage in her hair. And the doctor put her on Wolfram. And now she feels so good. She on on a hard tablet for sure to control her the heart rhythm. She tell her friend, hey, you take this very good. Wolfram, you know, Wolfram to kill the mice more, you know? And the friend has similar symptoms, you know? Every symptom are similar, not mean they are the same condition. That person, they took that bottle to come to me, can I buy this one? No, the other ladies, oh, wonderful drug. I said, you're going to die in a matter of few hours only, like rat and mice. You take it, you're bleeding to death. Really? Oh, it took me for a while. There's so many stories every day, now online. We discard it as a pharmacist. Don't buy online, please. Online is a lot of scrap. American, the worst one as well. Believe it on all these are using professor, professor them to talk about this good, this good. This is wrong. I said, go go to pharmacist or doctor to discuss properly. If you want to take the one, you know, but maybe you go to doctor first. I don't recommend you. Some people both from Hong Kong. A long story. I shouldn't say this. I know I go too long, too long. In there, so many anti steroid you know, uh, non steroid anti inflammatory combined with steroid itself, prednisolone, blah, 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 and plus other uh, painkiller together from Hong Kong. This is excellent in Chinese medicine. They are uh, misled the public by every thing. It's a miracle drug. But I said, you're going to kill yourself. The kidney is on. You go to see your doctor. The doctor told her, oh, but the didn't listen. He said, oh, make this feel so because of steroids. No, no, prednisolone is a medicine. And I have it not long. After she had problem, I don't want to say more. But thank you. Yeah. So I just want to add. So regarding yeah. to the herbal medication, so yeah. most of the migrants that they come to Australia, they likely to have um herbal medication along with their um happy drug. So they say that like that um herbal medication helps them like to boost their energy. Mm -hmm. So what for the doctor in uh, most of like all of the doctor and nursing here, we are not recommend um patient to have the herbal medication because we don't have enough research or evidence to support that um, this drug is good for um, liver health. But you can take supplement when you come to pharmacy, we try to ask you a bit more. Why do you keep encouraging our good to ask pharmacists to if they have other medical condition? I give you a bit idea, pharmacists have the, the rule. Before they become a pharmacy system, we train them to get a certificate, certificate one, two, three. The question they have to ask WHO, you know, W stands for what is for, who is for, you know, or, or WHAT, sorry, WHAT, what, uh, what sort of condition do you have, H who, with the, uh, how long you have the symptom of it, W, w means who is for, uh, H is uh, how long you have the symptom, A, what is your actual symptom, body give you the treatment. To do that, we have a lot of Reference book, like for example, herbal medicine, we have Cochrane Library, or we have a book. I have my own book. We can look at drug interaction. You don't, don't think that herbal medicine supplement is not going to interact with Western medicine, they always interact, believe me. Even you take high dose of fish oil, your INR, you know, the bleeding time is going to be longer. That's why you tell you because you go for surgery, you have to stop your fish oil for one week before that. You know, and therefore, all of those are medicines like Ginkgo, Ginkgo of wood. That's good, cool. doesn't uh, have any problem, but it interacts with some blood thinning tablet. Therefore, we always ask, are you on bleeding uh, blood thinning tablet? If you're on that, we don't give to you because that one makes the blood thinning a bit thinner and also it increase the blood circulation in your brain, whatever you increase your memory, this sort of thing, increase circulation to your extremity, whatever. But make sure you ask the pharmacist as well. Now, why the government want to control the paracetamol to less? Because not in a, not the problem from pharmacy, problem from petrol station, from so safe way of Uber, from coal, from those sort of places, IGA, whatever. I always against that sort of thing from day one, why the government deregulate to get uh, medication into commit a retail farm, a retail shop. I said, wrong. How do you have your profit like Nurofen? It's wrong. It can cause a lot of bad side, but it can cause bleeding, you know, internally as well. But the children still take it as well. I never recommend. 
unlike the desperate situation to get that. When talk about Herbo, we have book or Cochrane Library to go we see. Cochrane Library more the, our Bible to see this drug can cause what and what. What is evidence based? Sometimes evidence based very little. We tell not honestly. Oh well, the SIBO effect is very important as well. Someone take it as long as you believe in it, you feel good. That's that's nothing to worry about. As long as you don't enter with other medication. Okay. Thank you for that. A long story. You want to tell me about that? That's okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, any yeah. any questions from the main room? Yeah, any question? Ask me. I I love to answer. Oh, because I can't see. Yeah. I share the screen. I can't see. Only oh, they can yeah. hear. I know we can hear yeah. what they ask question. Yeah. Any? Yeah, I had a question. Just um. Maybe Adrian can repeat for us. Yeah. Um. I just wanted to know. Can hear much. A, a lot of people. I Want to talk louder? Can Sorry. Hear? But then here, can you talk about it? Yeah. Maybe near. Can you hear me now? Yes. Adrian, maybe near yeah. Adrian microphone. Okay. <laughs> On um, I, I just wondered um, once you commence hepatitis B medication, are you able to stop? Yes, for sure you can stop if there is any you know, issue regarding to that like side effect or affect other uh, kidney, like for example, nephrotoxicity or maybe. Or density, whatever that one, the from the stop is to do with the specialist that prescribed that one as well. The GP hardly they can stop that. But for my personal point of view, you don't stop it unless there is some problem. If you stop by yourself, it means you take your own recently. You have to consult with your specialist all the time or your GP first. For a pharmacy, we have no right to tell you to stop, you know, because you must continue on until everything is. No, no, I don't think you can stop for hepatitis B. You can't stop at all, except the uh, hepatitis C only because no cure like yeah. they already mentioned. You just take the rest of your life to control the virus from replicate only. Thank you. Uh, I want to add more, Nadan. Yeah. So um, there might be a chain that um, like it depends on your blood test result or your liver function, mm -hmm. function test. If you take your happy medication and there could be some side effect of kidney failure or anything, your doctor might ask you to stop taking those medication and change you to another alternative treatment. Mm. Or in case like your like liver function test is or your viral load is back to normal or anything, they there might be a chance that they could lower the dosage. Yeah, but there might be a chance that you have to take the medication for the rest of your life okay. at the moment. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. That's good. Any more questions? We love the question. I love questions. <laughs> Sometimes people are really more interested. Oh, Heidi's coming up. Yep. I have a quick question. I noticed in some of the medications, um, it was recommended that you um, take the medication before consuming food. I feel like that's not usually the case. I was just wondering what the reason is for that. Sorry, I think I think to recap the the yeah. question was um why why is some medication associated with having to take food at the same time just because I think um, Maddie if I'm right um, some of the information you've read where it's it other indicates to take without food or with food yeah. uh, I think Maddie was just interested in learning a bit more about why some medications might be required to be taken with food or, or without. Cool. Very good question. Yeah. A pharmacist's role and pharmacy assistant always tell them every day. I give you one example, simple example first, easy. Some medication, I give you one example, antibody like penicillin. Penicillin, the first one on the market about so long ago, but actually I can't remember now, maybe over 100 years ago. Penicillin, when you take with food, the stomach, when food go into your stomach, the stomach release acid straight away to to, to help the digestion. The seed of the stomach can destroy the molecule of penicillin. Therefore, you need to take penicillin minimum half an hour before food. Otherwise, the medication is not going to work because it break down all the, the molecule of the or membrane of the antibiotic. Therefore, why you have to take empty stomach? Therefore, the pharmacy always say, hey, you have to take empty stomach. Otherwise, it's not going to work. 
and some with food because some medication can irritate your stomach a little bit. It's no other harm at all, but just irritate your stomach. Before you might take with food, you don't have any irritation on your stomach. That's the main common one. And so many other medications too, like for bone, the people that try to have a bone density very low, they take supplement one weekly or one daily or one monthly. Those also have to be empty stomach, therefore it absorb better only. And with a glass of water as well, absorb better. Therefore, sometimes the absorption can't absorb much because of the food interfere with the absorption only. That's that, that reason. Therefore, always there's reason behind it before or after. Sometimes you don't need to like moxicillin, the second generation of um, uh, penicillin. You don't need to take before or after. It doesn't matter whatever you want to eat, take. Because it doesn't affect the design, a new molecule that can resist to the uh, acid of the stomach. That's the thing. Therefore, you can take without or with or without no problem. Therefore, but the pharmacist's point of view, sometimes we want the customer to comply with the medication. The idea said, come on, you take with food because you tend to forget like that. You take with food, not mean that you have to take with food because every time you eat, you put your medication next to you, you remember that in the kitchen. But, or you always, when I eat, I, when I eat something, I think that I have to take something. That the trick, the strategy to remind customer to remember how to take medication correctly, comply and more that one. Thank you. So I just want to add more, Mehdi, because um, there's some misinformation that for happy medication, you have to take it the same time every day, but that's just um, like, you know, wrong information. The doctor wants you to take the medication because the doctor wants you to take the medication every day. So we recommend to take it the same time so that you, you're not going to forget it. And for some medication, just like Richard said, that some medication have to take it before the food. So it's like can have absorbed well, and some medication has to take with the food or after food because that medication could irrit irritate your stomach. But one more yeah. to do that one is a good point. You see, for some medication have to take the same time, why the same time, like oral contraception, because it's hormonally, lady or hormone lady to go in there. When your hormone higher than usual, you can't conceive. But if you take all over the place, you're going to get probably a dozen of baby. Yeah, that's your problem, not the pharmacist's problem, okay? Yeah. Therefore, you have to think the same time to make sure your label of your hormone in your bloodstream consistent or that to stop con uh, conce uh, conception only. Yeah, yeah that, that's the most important yeah. only. Yeah. yeah. So we have two more questions. Any question more? Paul, I'll ask the question. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> not, not a question or a comment. I was, just, I was just reflecting on the importance of a pharmacist. So yeah. we're just talking about the complexities around when somebody might be going on medication or off medication, some of the education that's required in there, plus also the you know considerations in regards to training. Do we need it with food or without food and our uh, potential interactions with herbal therapies or other medications? There is a really important pivotal role that pharmacy plays in supporting our community members, particularly when we're looking at engaging them for viral hepatitis B medication as well. So um, I just, just as a comment and an observation, just appreciating the complexity um, around our, con our consumers in, in terms of being able to navigate health services. And there's a lot of education that need, that people um, require support around. So I think, you know, just as a bit of a walk away message for all of our team members, it's really important to, to think about the role of the pharmacist um, in that education process and that support and that support function that they play. So a very big thank you. That's, that was it, just a comment, thank you. I just want to give a final uh, uh, segment or idea to tell all of your health profession you see, drug interaction very easily get interacted. Why farms is all each other look at drug interaction? In England now, but this may be here already, some uh, part of Europe, they let the farm or the doctor to only diagnose only. And after that, that the pharmacist prescribing is state. In England now, it's in the clinic, a big clinic, super clinic, always doctor diagnose only, you don't prescribe. How to the pharmacist prescribing? That's what the future if. Australia can do that even better because we know drug interaction. Why the government have a scheme for medication review? Or we call medication review, come to the pharmacist, you don't need to refer by any doctor. Or med, uh, diabetic uh, uh, check, diabetic check, it means you come, pharmacist go through everything and tell you from how you take it correctly, what time of the day, check your sugar level, what sort of food you eat, you can't eat. 
you are like a, a multitask type of profession. You don't need that teacher, you don't need physiotherapist, you don't need so many things, but farms can play a role that everything in one package and cost you nothing. Why you, A, you can tell your cli uh, client, say, hey, you go to pharmacist, uh, the pharmacy that can provide you that some pharmacy, they don't provide that because they cost you nothing. They can go through your medication, which one you take, which one you shouldn't take, and how you look after yourself and so on if you're diabetic. Because drug interaction is very common because we are chemical. Why well, I say to people that you think that everything natural. No, all are chemical as well. You are chemical, I'm chemical, everyone are chemical, you know, in this world. Therefore, you eat food is chemical. Uh, or fruit is a chemical. Therefore, everything is chemical interact with each other. Therefore, food can interact with each other too. Therefore, see the pharmacist. That's most important. It can give you a very clear uh, understanding about what is medication, what drug interaction. Because hospital even harder work, IG and hospital. You have to be 100% sure that you kill someone in one or a second only, or you kill 10 or 20 or 50 people in one go. Because you make mistake a little bit, you can kill someone. Physical interaction or chemical interaction. That's a maybe or uh, pharmacological interaction. Thanks for that. I thought the Paulette raised her hand before. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I did. Yeah, actually, uh, I, had a, I had a question that, that followed on from what you were just talking about. As a pharmacist, do you find that you're doing a lot of the frontline education for patients that come in with the diagnosis of, of Hep B? And is there anything that you, more that Liverwell can do to, to assist with that? That you can assist us or? Yeah. yeah. Lovely, you work as a team. I love that. Honestly, with the GP, we communicate well. Some GP, hey, you go to limb pharmacy, easy to explain to you. I can't explain, a bit hard to explain. They come to me, oh, we all go to Richard, Richard, I don't mind. And for you as well, we work together. If you want to, for example, you provide a health seminar to one of the community, if they have some issue in doubt, in doubt, and you think that you can't convince them or explain to them or reinforce the treatment, you come ask them to come to the pharmacy. You can come with them if you want to, if you have time. We can reinforce the treatment the treatment very easily because we work as a team at the front line. You'll do the right work. we the front line. we the ones that get very little from the government incentive. We provide free uh, advice. The government never see that. That's a problem. And we work very hard to protect customers from go to back or go to the hospital from the interaction problem. Uh, adverse drug reaction, whatever. We work very hard front line and they trust us in a way, you not know, to some extent as well. Therefore, they come to us, but they're always uh, looking for advice. But therefore, we work as a team. And for me, it's always now very important. I enjoy, I enjoy to provide uh, uh, the advice and health seminar. I have a lot of health seminar on a weekly basis. I do every night and also from Washington, D.C. as well, the television there, Radio Free Asia TV. They, uh, interview with 12 30 in the morning i don't mind as long because as long as the whole cambodian community around the world they understand what they're doing i'm very happy therefore we provide health seminar every association here i come very frequently with italian club the chinese uh, mandarin uh, free well mandarin network that's all thing i do the health seminar here for free i used to be part of slack free well activity learning center uh, uh slack uh, free well learning activity center i provide the new migrant about to understand their health, how to prevent diabetes, how to prevent high blood pressure, whatever, whatever. We do a lot of things from SBS radio for me on frequently on SBS radio on 3% on uh, YouTube, ABC International, on social media, I have 162,000 followers. And I provide in store all the time, anyone walk in, anything, yeah. any advice from blood test from Cambodia, from Thailand, from Singapore, I provide them, I explain to them very thoroughly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can do anything to help you. Yeah, you can for sure. You can help us a lot, honestly, to you. Like, I think they be very can help us a lot. You know why? You can, like, for example, if I said, but I don't know you have a fun to go to visit the customer or not, or you can come with us when we provide health seminar, like TP invited me, I'm very free. It means that I like like you can like TP can help me in Sri Lanka. Yeah, TP invite me to provide health seminar for Sri Lankan this uh Friday night. That's what you, you you help us as well, you know, to understand what is liver all about, what is hepatitis B all about, and for us to play another part 
or you are to, you can help us a lot, honestly to you, but provide that the government give you fund or not. Because we want you to, to, to they can book customer or other customer for you to talk and stay. You know, or get organized a seminar. You can organize, I think we can organize seminar for any, now I'm honestly, I'm, I'm glad that uh, Adrian can give uh, TP more, more, more role in different community, multicultural community. That's good. In Fawley, Cambodia community. Now, it's other community. That's very good. You know, very, very, very good. Because now I take TP to Cambodian temple. You know how many people, about thousands of people. And she can provide health seminar that type of hepatitis as well. That's a good one that give us a clear understanding about what is hepatitis all about. I mean, you can help a lot in our community as long as the government willing to give you a lot of money, that's all. I can, I need you help a lot. Probably it is by good loan as well. <laughs> thank you. Well, look, I wanted to send a very big thank you to you, Councillor Lim. Thank you so much for your time. And it is an absolute pleasure to meet you. And I think we very much look forward to supporting your efforts um, in the future. And if there's any way that we can assist, I know that the team would be very keen to get behind you in support of the Khmer community, um, as well as the Springvale community as well that you lead. Um, so if there's any way that we can assist, please don't hesitate to reach out. And I know that I'm really keen to support um, Tepi's really strong working relationship with you as well. I think that's really important. Um, so a very big thank you from me and a very big thank you from the rest of the team. I'll get everyone to give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Give me a chance to, to you know, to part, to be part of your organisation. Pippi is a great, you know, I want her to help the committee as much as she can. She's very passionate about that. Why I said, okay, I'm very busy, honestly. After you have another meeting. But I don't mind. I don't. I serve the community, any nationality.